Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at MSI's Force GC30 version 2. Is it going to be a suitable replacement for this tired old thing? Keep watching to find out. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at MSI's GC30 version 2. This is part of their force range of peripherals, uh, gaming peripherals from MSI, available in two colours. There is a white and grey, which is this one, and there's also a black and red in MSI's traditional colours, both of which actually are also available in both a wired and wireless version. The wired version is going to be slightly cheaper, somewhere in the region of about £27 here in the United Kingdom. The wireless version, which can also be used wired, often retails somewhere between the 35 and 40 pounds mark so not a particularly bad price in terms of what it is and what it offers and for a what is effectively a xbox type of clone controller but it has a few other tricks up its sleeve also which we'll take a look at as we go through the video but ultimately is it going to be any good well let's find out so first of all, taking a look at the packaging. As you can see, this is the white version, GC30 version 2. Now, the primary version differences between the original GC30 and the V2, very subtle indeed. Uh, there's a little bit of change to the grip on the side. We've got enhanced dual feedback motors in the actual controller itself. The buttons for the back and the start button have a slightly more sharper edge to them. Other than that, effectively pretty much identical. They have upgraded some of the other features such as the buttons now have a 2 million click lifespan rather than the previous 1 million click, but yeah, realistically, who's going to be counting? On the side of the box, it says about the cross-platform support, dual vibration motors, and also comfortable rubberized grip section. Looking on the back of the box, it talks about the cross-platform support, so just to elaborate on that a little bit more, so PC is the kind of predominant one which this is suited for, both in wired and wireless modes. In the wired mode, you can use it with an OTG cable for Android, all those kinds of things, and also it will work with PS3. So essentially, really, PC is where it's aimed at, but it can be used with others. Uh, it says it's got extremely accurate triggers, and actually, I can confirm that. Actually, in my testing, the triggers are absolutely wonderful, and they are analog triggers for the bottom ones. The top buttons are just the normal on-off buttons, but the actual triggers themselves, so if you're into maybe racing games or using this for flight sims, that kind of thing, you can have excellent rudder control or speed or brake control. It's got dual vibrating motors, so those have been upgraded, and they've got like a haptic feedback, so if you get knocked on one side more than the other, then it seems to vibrate more on one side than the other, which is uh, always nice. And you've got additional D-pad covers, which is something which they did in the original version as well. These have been actually slightly upgraded and they do work particularly well. The magnets seem to be very strong. We'll take a look at the different covers, but essentially you've got your traditional kind of cross section or your more of a thumb pad style control for that D-pad button. Uh, the specifications are there, I'll give you a close up of that so you can have a quick read through and look at the weights and the battery, etc. Moving on to what we actually get. Now I have actually been using this, uh, but I thought I'd go through and do the unboxing process so you can see what it is you actually get and go through a product tour. So obviously you get your user guide, which you're definitely going to need. Uh, this isn't the most straightforward and plug and play of devices, although it can be. And what I mean by that is if you're going to use it in a PC and you're just going to connect it straight up by the wired or wirelessly, absolutely fine, no problems at all. And it just, you plug it in, it works. When it comes to some of the other modes where you have to press and hold buttons to change configuration between analog, digital, and for Android support, that kind of thing, that's where it gets a little bit murky and uh, isn't always quite as accurate as you'd have hoped. But certainly, if you're on the PC side of the fence, you're going to have no problems at all. Next up, we've got the controller itself, which we'll take a closer look at shortly. Also included is a 2 meter USB cable, so that's micro USB to Type A. And also included in there is an OTG or a USB Type C cable, which terminates also into micro USB. So you can use either Type A or Type C effectively. Also included is the wireless receiver, which is uh, quite a cute thing. My opinion is it could have been done with being a little bit smaller. Does it necessarily need that big of a square above the USB? If you're in a system where you've got two USB front mounted ports and they're relatively close by together, you might struggle getting another device in plug next to it, so do bear that in mind. Also included is one of the removable D-pad covers, so let me show you how that works. So you've got the traditional style, which is included straight off, and all you do is just pull that off. It is magnetic, so it snaps into place, so that's a pretty nice feature. And you just put on the replacements, and it's magnetic, so that one is actually quite nice. 
for thumb control. If you want to use it for certain games, you can do. Or if you just want the kind of the standard setting or the traditional setting, then you can use your traditional D-pad cover. So nice that you've got the option for both of those. That was something which some people said with the original version, the magnets weren't particularly strong and it had a tendency to want to flick out, but flicking it doesn't want to jump out. So that is uh, really cool. And it's actually got quite a nice sound to the switches as well. So looking closer at the controller, so pretty much if you've seen an Xbox 360 controller in the last 20 years, then bet it's exactly the same thing, or at least pretty much identical. So we've got very similar layout. Obviously you've got the traditional buttons, X, Y, A, B. Something which I would have liked to have seen on this, which uh, I think is actually a bit of a mistake, is the fact that in order to try and mute the color palette, they've actually taken away the color coding for the buttons. Now, for some people, that's going to be absolutely fine because muscle memory takes over in a lot of situations. But actually, for me, playing some games which are on PC, which are kind of Xbox compatible, that kind of stuff, quite often if you've got a combination of certain mashing of buttons or press and hold a certain button, it quite often comes up on the screen and you just see a color button. So having those color coded for me personally, I think would have worked much better. Let me know what you think in the comments section. The start and back buttons, I like these a lot actually. They're slightly more raised than the previous GC30. And also the fact that they clearly say exactly what they are. So that is the start button. You've got no issues there. And that one says back. A lot of controllers these days kind of miss out on that. So you're kind of looking at this controller and it's like, oh, which is the start button? Now for some people, obviously muscle memory again, you know it's the one on the right, but yeah, it's nice to see that it's there. Also, slap bang in the middle, we've got the uh, the main button, or what would normally be your Xbox button, which is the MSI button in this instance. If you're using this in a Windows environment, then press that button, you get your uh, game center come up, Xbox game center, so you can do all the settings in there, record footage, all that kind of stuff. Press and hold the button, and you can go through the various settings and changing configuration. So press and hold it for more than three seconds, and then it starts flashing, and you can press it and change through various settings. I've got to be honest with you, it's really confusing. Although, it's actually not too bad because on the back, there is actually a sticker telling you exactly what the settings do and how they work, etc. So that's quite handy to have that there. And you, chances are, if you're gonna be using this in a multi-device setup, you probably are gonna rely on that to remember what setting is what. Uh, it comes out of the factory in the default setting, as you'd expect, so ready and waiting just to go straight into Windows and use as a normal joypad. So looking at the rest of the design, in terms of actual the comfort and that kind of thing, again, it is essentially a Xbox 360 style controller, although you do find that this section is a little bit fatter, so it feels a little bit wider and it's also a little bit more stumpy. Uh, for me personally, I prefer the Xbox 360 in terms of the actual feel. When I'm holding it in a certain position, which I'm used to, for me, it feels like the GC30, the four buttons seem to be just a little bit further away than what they would normally be. So although it does look very similar, there is a very subtle difference and also, you do notice the grip on the side. They've actually made the grip on the side of this one, the GC30 V2. They've made this a little bit more subtle, so it's more grippy in the middle and it tapers out towards the outside edges. Whereas the GC30, the original one, was a, a very kind of uh, coarse material, super grippy. This is less grippy. And obviously, if you look at the original Xbox 360 controller, that section was completely flat and smooth. So some people may actually prefer it being smooth and not actually kind of rub away at your palms when you're using it, but okay, that's gonna be down to the individual. Other things of note on this section, this is where it gets a little bit bad. Um, the analog triggers or controls, whatever you wanna call them, these are touted as being extremely responsive and accurate. Now, I would disagree with that quite a lot. In my testing, and you're probably seeing this on the screen right now, trying to calibrate it in Windows and just seeing what the joypad's doing. Trying to just do a circle like that is actually really hard to do, especially if it's not around the outer edge. If you've got the outer edge, it's fine because you can use the actual rim of the controller as your kind of guide mark, but actually trying to do it as an inner edge, it does appear to jump around all over the place. It's very kind of skittish. And also you find that you're using considerably more pressure or considerably more of a reach. So with the traditional Xbox 360 controller, if you moved slightly over, it would move quite a lot. So there's a very much kind of a dead zone in the middle. It's not really a dead zone. It just doesn't move a great deal. Like the ratio is quite high. So you have to move the controller quite a lot to get the full reach. So with the traditional one, you would just move it slightly and it would go over further. And also the traditional Xbox 360 controller, even though it is 15, 20 years old now, 
actually feels a lot firmer and basically more responsive. So just moving it around, it's very loose. Anyway, I'm witching on way too much. Essentially, if you like the feel of the original Xbox 360 controller and you're thinking this looks very similar, it should feel and work the same way, essentially it doesn't, which is one of the reasons primarily for me that this really doesn't work for me. Uh, other things that don't work for me are the kind of ridges on the triggers, even though they are analog triggers and they do work spectacularly well, they really do, they are super accurate and there's a, actually a really nice spring to them. The ridges on them and the actual design of them, they are very flat, so it just feels kind of uncomfortable to use, it just feels like you're basically pressing on a clothes peg, whereas with the controller for the Xbox, they were more rounded edges and didn't have these notches in them, so it just felt better if, if you're using it for longer periods, which most gamers these days, you're going to be sat down for probably a good half an hour to an hour or so, if not longer, if you can. So this actually does become quite fatiguing to use, especially with those ridges on the buttons there, even though they do work very, very well. Uh, on the back side, here is the micro USB type connection. Again, this is 2022 now. Really, that should have been USB type C, I think. This controller is, I think, a year or so old now, but certainly USB type C would have made a massive difference there. And USB C has got to be the way to go in the future, I feel. Other than that, weight wise, absolutely fine. Not particularly heavy, actually. Very lightweight. I'll put the measurement in grams and pounds on the screen for you to see how heavy it is. It feels, again, basically. Being that it is an Xbox 360 clone controller, it does feel very similar, albeit there is a slightly extra bit of weight because of the rechargeable battery which is built in. So overall to summarize, um, yeah, I would say this covers a lot of bases, but for me, the one base that it needs to cover, for me personally, is the accuracy of those uh, controls there. If they're not accurate enough, for me for use or they just don't feel right then i can't use the controller long term and that is why ultimately i always end up going back to my xbox 360 controller i'm yet to find a suitable replacement on the market of all the ones i've tried this is probably the closest one i've found so far we've reviewed uh, tons of other joysticks which you can see in the video playlist which will be listed down below this is one of the more expensive ones we've tried but sadly it isn't quite there but Saying that, if you do want to have a controller which you can use with Android devices, maybe a PlayStation 3, uh, maybe a Nvidia Shield, those kinds of things, and also use it on your PC quite easily and have it fully compatible with the PC, then I think there's definitely a lot worse you can do on the market. Certainly if it is at a good price or reduced, I would be more inclined to take a closer look at it. But ultimately for me, it's going to be the Xbox 360 controller, which I think I'm ultimately going to go back to. So. Nice try, definitely a good three and a half out of five, but yeah, not quite good enough, I'm afraid, MSI. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. Um, are you looking forward to getting one of these or have you got one of these? Do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you find that these analog sticks just aren't quite what they should be or at least what you're used to? Although obviously if you haven't come from Xbox 360 controller, you'll probably find it absolutely fine. And if you do, do let me know in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.